Welcome to the Happy Healthy Life Podcast with your hosts, Rob and Randy, who reveal the truth, the lies, and confusion about health so that you are no longer the victim to mainstream medical dogma and you are the hero to your own happy, healthy story. Hey there, and welcome back to the Happy Healthy Life Podcast with your host, Rob and Randy. What is up, guys? And we are the Happy Healthy Guys. We are. Yes, awesome. we are. That is the rumor. How's everybody doing today? First of all, we just want to say thank you for listening to the show. Thank you so much for also sharing the show. Uh, you know, nothing nothing makes us smile more and happier than when people uh, let us know that they've been listening to the show. They've been just doing the things that we've been talking about. They've really just changed their life because of what it is that they've mm-hmm. they've learned, and it just it feels really good to know that we're not just um, talking to each other. Uh, uh, up here that uh, we are talking to people uh, around the world and people are, are are taking action and and people are waking up yeah they're more open woke. right to yeah. these conversations is, yeah ab- absolutely I, I so think, that makes us smile yeah yeah i think the 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 covid uh pandemic or the the government lockdowns and the redistribution of wealth and the whole lies that were going on i think uh, at that point there was a real shift for a lot of people who just weren't really sure I think that ultimate betrayal was that tipping point where most people now they have no longer trust not only the government, but the medical system and all the three letter agencies that all work in unison to help control and drive this false health narrative. So I think people are ready, right? They're they're having these conversations. You no longer can keep us silent. There's no more politically correct. There's no more silent majority. Let's get the truth out. Let's talk it up. Let's hold people accountable, especially when it comes to our health, because we're they're not going to stop lying to us. That is for sure. So what is what are we going to do and what's going to be our personal responsibility to help continue to shift the talking points? Yeah. So let's talk about some news right now. We're going to cruise cruise through the Internet. Just talk about some just uh, just relevant topics. And, and we'll go ahead and start with uh, what it is that you were texting me last night. I'm driving home from my from my church men's group meeting and getting texts from uh, Dr. Randy um, because he was uh, being triggered. And so I know a, a few things that trigger you, um, one of them being when people uh, are around you spraying um, uh, spray oh, stun, stun, yeah. stun, tan lotion. That, that's for sure a trigger. Yeah, that should be uh, illegal, number one. Uh, If you want to poison yourself, that's fine, but poisoning all of your friends and neighbors is not okay. Um, So yeah, that that definitely is a trigger. If I, um, you know, if I was on a date, that's this is definitely hypothetical. And uh, we were at uh, a beach area or a pool, and a girl pulls out a spray can of sunblock. I'm immediately leaving that date. And that relationship is immediately over. So that's a no go, right? That there. is a that is a no go. That's that's one of my. Uh, it's completely over immediately, right there. <laughs> and I'm not. I'm being funny, but I'm not being funny. Okay, well, let's talk yeah. about that because there's probably people who have never listened to the show before, or somebody that you know has 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 watched the show, listened to the show, has sent this to someone else, and so for somebody who's new listening to us right now obviously you're interested in being healthier you wouldn't yeah. be here um but why would it be then that somebody um you know that you shouldn't be spraying um spray suntan oil or lotion or spray sunscreen on the body why is that a no no yeah you know and and i guess because we've been taught that if you look at yeah. if you look at any esthetician any esthetician's website Instagram, telling them to, to come in. The first thing that they always tell them to do is make sure that you, you're using some type of SPF sunscreen to protect themselves from skin cancer. Yeah, yeah. They're telling you to, you know, be careful in the sun, you know, stay out of the sun, cover up, use sunscreen, apply it multiple times a day. I mean, we're so brainwashed. It'll be, you know, five o'clock in the evening with almost zero UVA, UVB, and people are lathering, slathering on sunscreen. But it goes back to, you know, our, our the way we look at health and knowing that we're always trying to get to the cause of why people are sick. A good question is what makes people ill? What makes people get sick? And we know one of the biggest reasons people are sick today, and you name the condition, is because of toxins, 
right? Really nutrient deficiencies and toxins are at the heart of any disease process. And so when you see somebody spraying on the sunscreen, number one, not only are they blocking the benefits of getting sun, which we can talk about, but there are endocrine disruptors in these sunscreen products. What does that mean? Well, endocrine disruptors, they mimic estrogen. And what estrogen does, estrogen is a mitochondrial poison. And so now what you're doing is you're creating an environment where cancer and metabolic disease is going to happen. So you think about how many people spray this stuff on, put it under their skin. By the way, transdermally, when you put something on your skin, it's as if you ate it or swallowed it. It's going right into your bloodstream, right into your tissue. And so now we have a whole issue now where so many people are metabolically sick. What does the study say? What almost 94% of Americans are metabolically unhealthy? Part of that metabolic destruction, one of the metabolic breaks is endocrine disruption and estrogen. This is why plastics and microplastics and nanoplastics are so dangerous. They mimic the effects of estrogen. So you have all these metabolically broke people that are estrogen dominant. That's a breeding ground for chronic disease yep. and specifically cancer. Those are just some of the talking points there. And, you know, we are so diligent, and a lot of you are with your own health. You really try to take meticulous efforts into the things that you do. When somebody starts spraying that everywhere, I'm like, I'm breathing it. I'm smelling it. I'm literally running away. I'm like, at least just pull out the lotion and put it on. Quit spraying it on. And then you see the child. They're spraying them up and down, flipping them 180, spraying them down again. I'm thinking this poor child is already being damaged with endocrine disruptors. You just can't unsee certain things when you see them. And when you know, you know, it's hard to unknow things that are so important. Um, and you don't want to be fragile, God. This isn't a fear campaign. You can get away with stuff, right? But Little things do add up, and I think being intentional about these little things goes a long, long way because you and I have both changed 100 little things over the last 25 years. Yeah, at, at least. And so, all right, so then the question becomes, all right, well, then if the sunscreen is dangerous, well, what about the harmful effects of the sun? How am I going to protect myself? What about the the rays that are coming from the sun? Aren't those going to damage my skin? Yeah, well, you know, that's what they tell us. But, you know, these are the same people that said if you don't get a COVID vaccine, you're going to die, right? These are the same people making these rules and making these laws and telling us about health when they have no interest in keeping us healthy. So listen, guys, the sun has been vilified. The sun has been around for a very, very <laughs> long time, okay? So this didn't just pop up last week. The sun's been around. I think people probably had to navigate how to get sun exposure and how not to get it way before sunscreens were ever developed. Remember, man made the sunscreen, God made the sun. And anytime you I'm deplete, going God. I'm going to go with God. <laughs> Just saying. I choose God every single time. You know, God really gave us the sun for so yeah. many reasons. It plays a huge role in balancing our hormones because every single hormone has a circadian rhythm, which is governed by sunlight getting sunlight into your eyes, onto your skin. And a lot of people talk about the benefits of vitamin D with sun exposure, but really making vitamin D doesn't even crack the top 10 reasons why you'd want to get in the sun. In fact, most vitamin D deficiencies are deficiencies in protein. They're deficiencies in zinc and magnesium. They're malnutrition associated because uh, some people don't get the sun and still have great vitamin D. Another different talking point, but to stay on track, it doesn't really make the top 10 getting vitamin D. Sunlight, just by the way, how do you feel when the sun is out, it's on your face, it's on your skin, and you take a deep breath in? I love it. Oh, I, I mean, I even went outside before we got going today just to go get a quick couple of minutes of sun in my eyes just to feel better. And one of the benefits of the sun, and there's many, many benefits, the sun literally is like our battery charger. You know, all energy production in the body happens within the cell in the mitochondria, in the electron transport chain where we make ATP and carbon dioxide. And so the sunlight gives two thirds of the energy requirements to the mitochondria, 
that help us create energy in our bodies. And your ability to create energy really is your longevity play. Because when you can no longer create energy, you can't heal, you can't repair, you can't regenerate. You literally can't do life. And so sunlight really is one of the most important things that we could possibly do. We're not saying go get burned. That is ridiculous. But we've got more people inside right now, Dr. Rob. They're under artificial lighting. They're slathering on sunscreen. They're wearing sunglasses, which is the best way to get sunburned because your eyes function. They are photobiomodulators. They take in the light and help regulate how your body responds to the sun so you don't get burned. So stop wearing sunglasses. But we're inside more sunscreen, artificial light, and yet skin cancer is worse now than it's ever been. So stop with the song and dance of slather on sunscreen that prevents cancer. Actually, if you look at the data, cancer is worse in every single category, specifically skin cancer. Trust me, I know because obviously I was hit with a melanoma skin cancer diagnosis almost 15 years ago. Yeah, it, is, it well, it's, it's interesting too because when you look at the data, you look at the studies, and you you look at even different populations that are the closest to the equator yes. that get that get more sun um, year round than anybody else in the in the world, and they have the lowest incidence of skin cancer, specifically so, melanoma. Yeah, specifically yeah. melanoma. So, so clearly, the sun's not what's causing the skin cancer. I think for a lot of those folks that are that are that are saying that it's funny because. That same person that says, I've got to put all this sunscreen on my body, or they've got the kid that looks like they're white um, there at the pool because they've got so much sunscreen on them. They've got the hat on, they've got the long sleeves, the whole the whole thing. Yeah, the whole um, thing. Meanwhile, you look at what the kid is eating for lunch. There's a lot of other uh, things that could be causing the skin cancer that have zero to do with the sun. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, speaking of sun, Capri Sun, which has nothing to do with the sun, which is the uh, the artificial fruit drink that the kid is drinking. Mm -hmm. Let's look at all the processed Lunchables that that kid is 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 eating, the nitrites, the nitrates in that uh, whatever that ham is in there, whatever, whatever, whatever that, that meat is in there. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at the candy that the kid is eating, all the, the processed the sugars, the chips, the artificial flavorings, the yep. artificial colorings, Let's take a look at all of those things right there. Um, the sun doesn't even make the top 100 things of that what that person is doing wrong yeah. that could be causing the problem. You know, we hear people all the time that are talking to us about, you know, why is it that I've got this sickness, this illness, this disease? And then you listen to that person talk for just a few more minutes and eventually they're gonna talk about what it is that they had for lunch or what they're having for dinner. Mm -hmm. And you take a look at what it is that they're putting into their body or they're putting on their body. And you can clearly see why that disease process is happening. Well, we talk about, well, lack of ease, dis-ease, mm -hmm. right? Taking that person's body out of balance. When you take that person's body out of balance and now their body's not able to adapt to the environment, right. they, we're not even talking about adapting to the sun. We're just talking about adapting to anything else and all the other chemical toxins that are in and around us and on us, whether we want them to be or we don't want them to be. I mean, think about the the chlorine that's in the water, that's in the tap mm -hmm. water that's going onto that person's body when they're taking a shower in the morning. You got to adapt to that because now the skin is absorbing that right there. So there's so many other things going on that we could keep on talking about. The sun ain't one of them. Yeah. The, what about your gut microbiome? You know, we just le recently launched uh, a gut program because of the importance of a healthy gut microbiome. Your gut really turned inside out is your skin. If your skin isn't healthy, you're not healthy. You're not healthy on the inside. You're inflamed. You are toxic. Your body's not adapting to stress chemically, physically, and emotionally. So it's just all too easy easy to blame the sun, which really creates a bunch of victims. If we're going to be honest, we always blame things that are out of our control. You know, there's nothing you can do about the sun. It is not going away. It is here for a reason. And I'm just not going to blame it and not take responsibility for my own lifestyle because you just rattled off what <laughs> seven, eight, nine, 10 things that maybe you mean you might want to look at before you completely jump to, yep, it's got to be the sun. But this dogma is is barked out from all the, these doctors and healthcare professionals and all your estheticians. And yet you and I get compliments all the time 
on the health of our story. skin, yet we're in the sun, I mean, as much as possible. I've never gotten more sun in my life. And this is coming from a guy who was given a late stage cancer diagnosis with melanoma. So clearly, if the sun caused melanoma, I would be riddled with it. It would have come back. It would be all over me. In fact, where most people get melanoma are in areas of the body where they're actually usually covered. Melanoma usually isn't happening on the face or on the head if you're bald. A lot of times, like mine, it happened on my back where normally I would have on clothing and covering. So it's just too convenient to blame the sun and then go to your doctor to, you know, to obviously, you know, dermatologist. How many times are they putting people on all these skin creams and treating conditions that have nothing to do with the sun? In fact, skin conditions get worse as you continue to remove the sun from your body. You know, I always give the example of if you take a plant out of the sun, you know, it's obviously not going to thrive. And if you see a plant that's looking brown, that looks malnourished, the one of the first things you would probably do is put it in the sunlight. You would give it nutrients and nutrition, put it in good soil. The last thing you would do is want to put on sunscreen on the plant or give it a bunch of toxic chemicals to treat the conditions of a lack of sun versus too much sun. It just doesn't make any sense. And any child could look at a plant and go, well, this plant doesn't need poison. This plant needs an environment where it can thrive. So you've got to keep that in mind. We always talk about, you know, which grass needs sunlight and water and nutrients, the brown grass or the green grass. And a lot of people say, well, it's the brown grass, which would be true, but the green grass needs it too. So the brown grass needs it to get healthy and come back into balance. The green grass needs it to stay healthy and to stay in balance. Very simple when you think about it. Okay, so let's get back to the original question. So what was it that triggered you last night? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, so I was watching the Cowboys game. That's a separate trigger. Um, <laughs> well, we got to, yeah, we'll, there's some issues. We'll table that. that. Uh, that's a whole other issue. And I don't want to get emotional and I don't want to use bad language because sometimes my nephews listen to this podcast. But um, no, I was watching and they were panning back and forth on ESPN with this time of year. They really begin to push with the Jimmy V Foundation. If you don't know who Jimmy V is, it's Jim Valvano one of the most iconic college basketball coaches who won a national championship back in the early 80s with North Carolina State, ended up getting diagnosed with cancer and gave this, this famous speech. And the speech is beautiful. If you've never heard it, it's worth Googling and listening to. It's a guy literally on his deathbed standing up in front of a ton of people at, I think it was at the SB Awards. Yeah, and he's SB giving, Awards. yeah, he's giving his last will and testament on stage and it is beautiful but the way the espn and the government agencies and all of the medical industries that have taken jimmy's story and what they're doing with it now i don't know that jimmy v would be excited about what they've done with his story his death and using his death to continue to drive an industry to this day is killing more people than it's helping. So I'm watching this and what they did is they featured a child that had been diagnosed with cancer and they're trying to connect that dots that because the Jimmy V Foundation and all the money that they raised for cancer research, this is a child that now is getting help. And because of this money, this is what's possible with kids. Of course, this kid, um, you know, unfortunately, following up on the story, this kid will be probably pretty alarming. But what they showed was a kid that was diagnosed with some type of um, lymphatic cancer, lymphoma. And it was discovered. And this kid was maybe three or four years old. They're interviewing the mom and the parents. And nobody asked the question. And this seems very simple to me is why would a four year old child get this aggressive cancer all through their lymphatic chain? as if somehow that would be a normal thing. And so clearly, because of the diagnosis, now this child is in the medical system and they're doing the chemotherapy, the child's losing his hair, looks sickly, they're doing all the medical treatments, and then they name the child cancer-free. And then of course you follow this up six months later and the story continues and now the cancer came back and now it's in the bone. And so now I believe the boy's sister has to donate bone marrow. So now there's a bone marrow transplant. And now they're thankful for the bone marrow transplant. And now the kid, this was done back a few months ago, and now the kid is back doing better again. But this, this same story, the same song and verse keeps getting played out 
that the reason that kids are sick with cancer and that the reason cancer rates are on the rise is because we don't have enough money for research. And what I'm trying to figure out is, is an industry that's making this much money, trillions and trillions of dollars, are they raising money to help put themselves out of business? They're on pace. The pharmaceutical industry is on pace in 2024, I believe, to make $1.8 trillion, Dr. Rob. It's crazy. $1.8 trillion with the T. Why does the richest industry in the world who profits off people being sick, why do they need our hard-earned money and why do they need our donations? Because it sounds good on the surface. Donate money, find a cure, yet what this money is going to is not what people think it's going to. It's not going to cure cancer. What it's going to is to fund more research, more pharmaceutical intervention on how can we detect and treat more cancer because the detection and the treatment of cancer is such a lucrative industry, it can't go away. And donating to these industries only perpetuates this false narrative and keeps this train moving. That was the trigger. So there's a lot of good people who donate. There's a lot of good people in this industry wanting to help people and children. The reality is right now, people are not dying from cancer. Cancer does not kill people. The only way cancer could kill you, if it's blocking a breathing passage, if it's cutting off blood supply to an organ, but the cancer itself cannot kill you. The battle isn't against cancer. Cancer is a dis hyphen ease. The battle is why are people getting sick? What is the cause? Because the cause is the cure. And none of this money is going to find the cause of cancer when we already know the causes of cancers and we already know there are cures for cancer. They're just not going to be found in a system that needs you to be sick. This is the wake up call to everybody out here listening. And this is how the entire industry works. Right now, we have a net death benefit with the cancer industry. What that means is that the entire cancer system went away. No more doctors and colleges, no more hospitals, no more chemotherapy, no more radiation, no more drug trials, no more of any of this medical nonsense that more people would live if the whole system went away because people are not dying of cancer. They're actually dying from the treatment. Yeah, and here's the insanity and in where it actually starts. I was just looking at uh, current things in 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 in, uh, in in the news when it comes to health, and the first thing that pops up it says HPV testing preferred over Pap for cervical cancer screening starting at age 30. Task Force Straff recommendation says, all right. Here's what they're doing is they're wanting to get people into the system at younger ages to be able to screen for these things that yes. don't even exist in the first place. Because once they got you into the system, you are now in the system. That's right. And so the narrative that they've taught you is that, you know what, there is something innately wrong with you. Okay. And it's just a matter of time before it shows up. And the sooner that we find it, the sooner that we can be able to start treating it, the sooner that we can start giving you drugs for it, Think about this. This is a for-profit industry, y'all. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about the, the insurance company, the hospital. It all is the same thing. And so you have to look at what it is that's happening is that if they can't get your kid diagnosed with cancer as a, as a child, it's just a matter of time if you are in that system, continue to keep on getting these screenings, however it is that the screening happens, because guess what? It's not a matter of if they're going to find something. It's just a matter of when they are going to find something because they are going to find something in there. They're not going to give you a solution. They're not going to talk to you about the cause. They're not going to listen to you saying, hey, you know what? Is there um is is there a lot a, a less invasive um treatment that you can be able to give me? You know what? They are very well scripted. Um, they are going to give you the doom and gloom story that is again very well scripted. And they're going to keep you in that system because they're going to tell you this is they're going to say, hey, and I remember I we've both had these conversations yes. with patients, doctors, their cancer doctors and these patients, they just didn't know what else to do. They trust us. And so they're like, hey, what do we do? 
Are there some things that we can be doing? Maybe some um, ways to be um, helping my own body adapt and heal to, to this. Hey, would you mind having a, a conversation with my cancer doctor? I remember getting on the phone and the cancer doctor um, was never very happy to get on this phone call. They didn't have any answers other than this person needs to get this treatment or they are going to die. Yes. It was always that yep. I had one hang up on me. Um, the, the one that hang up on me, I guess he felt bad that he hung up on me. He ended up calling me back like um, five minutes later to apologize for hanging up. And then that resulted in him hanging up again on me because I was asking questions and the questions were, okay, what is it that cause this okay so that if we can remove the cause then maybe this person's body can be adapting to stress i said for example i happen to know this 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 client right here who is eating at mcdonald's or was eating at mcdonald's on a regular basis um eating toxic foods foods with chemicals on it. The person is not exercising. They're not getting sunlight. They're not getting real foods into their body. What if we started to switch things and get real foods into the person's body, get them some sunlight, decrease their stress yep. levels, do all these different things. And they're like, oh, that's nonsense. I don't want, and this is a true story. This doctor goes, I don't want the patient to change anything that they're doing right now because it could compromise the treatment and they could die. In other words, if they started getting better, there would be nothing for them to treat mm -hmm. anymore, right? No more symptoms. It is just such a sick, sick system. Um, it's no wonder if you look in the news right now, you just look at the systems, and I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but you know, the other things in the news right now is the, um, if you don't already know, the the United Healthcare CEO that got gunned down mm -hmm. um, in the news. And here's the thing is that people are are waking up. Here's what they said when they it says I'm reading the I'm reading right now on 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 NBC News it says United Healthcare um, CEO shooting live update says su suspect I'm um, charged with murder who wrote these parasites had it coming wow and so people are are not okay with this anymore people are starting to want to take matters into their own hands because they see that there is a problem with this because when you're mm -hmm. in the system the system is for them to make money. How do the insurance companies make the money? It's denying the claims. Mm -hmm. It's rejecting the claims. It's waiting. And then it's then the only thing that they are paying for is the treatment, not to actually get to the cause of the problem in the first place. And so the longer that they can keep you into that system and, con and continue with that cycle right mm -hmm. there, the more money that they make, you guys understand. It's the healthcare these these healthcare companies like United Healthcare, Cigna, all these things. They're the ones that are actually employing the doctors. Yeah, Do you guys understand that? For. The doctors are working for the insurance company. Yeah, and it's it, re it reminds me of the quote from Upton Sinclair, which says, "It's hard for a man to understand something when his salary depends on him not understanding it." Right. It's very, it, you know, it's like, well, you don't know my doctor. I've got a good doctor. My doctor's more holistic in the way they think. Listen, the system does not allow any doctor to thrive. If they're going to step out of this model, they will be completely lose their license and they will no longer be able to practice medicine because the practice and the standard of care in medicine is not about creating health. It, there's nothing to do with health outside of a few specialty surgeries and some acute care. There is nothing our current healthcare system has, it has nothing to do with health. And so where, where I would come from now, because really it's, if we're gonna be honest, let me give, let's give the doctors a break here. Let's do that because yeah, you know they, they do come in handy on occasion. I broke my leg in high school, thankful for the surgeon. Uh, obviously I didn't want a natural healthcare provider at that time, but I'm gonna give the doctors a break here. Remember, they went to school to be trained how to diagnose and treat disease with drugs and surgery. This is what they're trained in. They spend eight years being indoctrinated, trained, and groomed to do this for a living. So what I would say is I had to stop blaming doctors for my crappy health. And this is why I left the medical cartel back in 1999 and i've never looked back because i was going to doctors and i was following their advice and my outcomes were horrible well that was that really the doctor's fault no so i always give the example if you went to a mechanic and you asked them for a haircut and they start giving you haircuts you bitching and complaining about how bad your haircut is 
from your mechanic who has no training in cutting hair, is it the mechanic's fault or is it your fault? You ultimately are personally responsible for your own health. Stop putting these doctors in situations where they're not able to help you. They are not able to help you get to the cause of your problem. They're not able to help you get to not only the cause, but create real solutions. They are there to diagnose and treat disease with drugs and surgery. They're not gonna take into consideration the toxins, the foods, the environment, sunlight. They're not looking at any of those things. They're looking at what can we diagnose? What is the biomarker? Is it in range or is it not? And here's the drug or the surgery. This is what they do. So stop going to them and trying to get healthy and then blaming them. Health is your responsibility because health is a birthright. You don't need more healing. You need less interference. There is no such thing as disease. There's only dyshyphenies. Remember, remember, disease is incurable. You can't cure disease. Dyshyphenies, where the body is out of balance, where your body's not adapting chemically, physically, and emotionally, that is curable. That is reversible because it's you making changes in your own life. So I would challenge every one of you, and a lot of you listening to our podcast, you've already done this, Stop using the medical system for health. Let it be what it is. It's for crisis in an emergency situation. It is not for you and your family to be healthy. It's not what they do. And it's not their fault. But I'm just going to tell you, I can't tell you how many people complain about things, yet they still go to these same doctors. Hey. They still keep going to the proverbial mechanic, asking for the haircut, and then bitching about their hair. Hey, listen, here's the thing. If you if you want to know what even like you said, that what what are they trained in is is diagnosing. Well, if you look at the word diagnosis, di means to um agnostic mean is not known. I have no idea. It's, I have no idea. So it's two people not knowing what in the world is going on with you. So just just so you know what that actually means, think about that for a second. Is that is is that somebody that you really want to trust to be able to help you truly understand your health and yep. understand how to be healthy. We want to make sure that you guys are asking the right questions. Okay. You know what, what is causing my problem? Okay. What do I need to do in order to be able to give my body mm -hmm. uh, a better opportunity to be healthy, create a better environment to be able to adapt to different conditions. And so, there you go. Um, yeah. Any closing thoughts for today's yeah. uh, for today's podcast? Yeah, yeah. Just just what is your your role in the outcome mm -hmm. that you're getting in life? You know, ultimately, personal responsibility is somehow we've a lot of us have moved that over to insurance companies to doctors. Heck, some of you have moved it over to us. We're not in charge of your health. I got my own stuff I got to work on, but your body's always working towards health. Don't ever forget that that health is the normal diseases like cancer and arthritis and heart disease. These are the abnormal. The body is designed to be healthy and it's a design to adapt. And so creating an environment where great things are more likely to happen is the key. It's kind of like when you look at, if you were going to look at a pond and there's no wind and there's, there's, it's just completely still looks like glass, right? That's the, that water's in balance, which is the normal state. And then if you took a rock and you threw that rock into the water you'd obviously start to get those ripples, right? And those ripples could be the symptom based off what just took place. So you've got these ripples, but the ripples, the symptoms are just the body or that pond of water just trying to adapt to bring everything back to balance, right? And so the question you wanna ask is not why is there a ripple, what was the rock? Why am I having these symptoms? What is causing these symptoms? Because the body, the symptoms that the body is going through is always the body working on getting you healthy. We're treating symptoms like cancer and other things, and we're not looking at the cause and not understanding that the body is really trying to heal you. We're blaming things that don't need blame. Take responsibility. Know that health is the norm. Don't treat the ripples. Ask, what is the rock? What is the rock? What are the things that you're doing in your life that are not allowing you to be at your optimal health? And it really doesn't have to be hard, right? The water you drink, the food that you eat, the air that you breathe, the drugs that you don't take, 
living a toxin-free life, being responsible, getting outside, getting your feet on the ground, get sunlight on your body, get sunlight in your eyes, live in gratitude, vitamin G, the most important vitamin in the world, relationships, family, community, really looking at the things that really make sense that ultimately produce the greatest outcomes and almost everything I just named off, they are free. Stop spending time, money, and energy into things that aren't giving you a return. I can promise you this, man, the happy, healthy life has literally changed our lives and is completely a philosophy built around honoring that you already have the greatest doctor inside of you, that you're not broken, that you are healed, you are whole, you are formed in God's image, and God does not make junk. Don't ever let anybody tell you anything that's different from that, because that is the real talk. Amen. Thanks again for listening to the Happy Healthy Life podcast with your host, Robin Randy. And we just uh, ask that if you like this information, that you would share the show, um, review it, let us know what you think, give us feedback. If you have any questions um, for us to answer live on the show and give you a shout out, you can send those questions to us on Instagram at the H2 Life. Thank you for following us on Instagram. If you don't already follow us there, make sure that you do that and have a happy, healthy rest of your yep. week. God bless you guys. Thanks for listening to the Happy Healthy Life Podcast. If you enjoy the show, make sure to follow them on Instagram at the H2 Life or on YouTube and Facebook at the Happy Healthy Guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and review the show wherever you listen to podcasts.